Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Elite Golf Podcast. My name is Jesse Kaufman. You guys know Matt Christian from Elite Golf Performance, and tonight we're coming from you from coming to you from the Bone Daddy's Restaurant in Denton, Texas. A very exciting show. We we have a our our best guest definitely uh, today. Very 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 special guest here. The uh, this is a gentleman had just finished a. Uh, a extremely successful career on the champions tour coming off a victory about what two months ago uh, up in canada the shaw charity classic uh we have mr west shore jr and west we really really appreciate you being here with us tonight well thanks for having me absolutely yeah and, pretty awesome and, and matt i know you guys have, have known each other for a while so i'll kind of let you guys talk about your relationship uh kind of how you guys met and, and what got you guys together yeah it's kind of of an odd thing we've been together i don't know how long we've which friend i mean i look at wes as friend family he's also a student but he's a mentor to me and also uh, you know i just kind of look at it as it's we both learn from each other and uh, there's been things he's done for me that i'll never forget in my life put me in locker rooms in the pj tour i'm walking about around heroes of mine and i know wes West did that for a reason. He's done it, 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 and the thing is, when it's on the Champions Tour, it means a little bit more to me now because those are my heroes, you know. Mine too. I mean, when I played uh, my rookie year out here, I played with guys that, you know, I grew up watching play golf. And, uh, I mean, it was neat to play with people that, you know, I rooted for when I was a kid and stuff and then finally get to, to play with them. It was uh, something special. Yeah, and then, and then take them out too. I mean, it's. Yeah, well, I mean, not, I don't mean that in a bad way. It's, I mean, you're a competitor. I know that, but we all want to beat each other. Yeah, give so, them a go. You know, it's uh, it's fun out there, and uh, you know, to, uh, you know, like I got to play with Larry Mize and some guys like that, and I mean, you know, he won the Masters, and uh, it's neat to get to play with like people, and you know, good. They're good folks too. Yeah. So Larry reminds me of Gene Littler. You know, I, I know you know who Gene Littler yeah. is and, and so forth, but that's silky. You can't, I don't care what you say, that's that rhythm and tempo. You can't beat it. You can't beat Every it, man. Every time I uh, go out on the range, I always go up to Larry and say, hey, I need to watch a few shots yeah. so I can get in rhythm. Yeah, that, they did that with Snead, I think, too, as well, right? Man, but, yeah. yeah, probably so. Yeah, Al Guyberger, you know. Uh, but, uh, yeah, those guys old school, and they play the game a little bit different, and I want you to go on about that, but – because uh, we, we talk about dink and dunking the ball around, plotting the golf course around, you know, plotting your way around a golf course and how important that is, especially on these championship level type golf course. If you don't mind, just tell us a little bit about what you, uh, well, your experience. It's definitely changed since then. I mean, now it's a bomber's course is the uh, way they play golf now. But uh, the guys like Larry and all those guys that are out there, Bernard Langer and all of them, yeah. uh, you know, they're, like you called it, they're plotters. They hit it to a point. And they hit it on the, another point, and then they're, you know, knocking it in the hole, which nowadays that's not really how people play golf anymore, at least in my opinion. They just hit it as far as they can, it doesn't really matter where it goes. Rough like that penal. And so, but back when they played, they, that's how you had to play golf. I mean, you had to hit it in the fairway, hit it on the green. Uh, rough was pretty penal back then, and, uh, you know, I think. A lot better uh, athletes now are starting to play, though. Getting a little big, aren't they? And uh, they're starting to work hard. Not that these guys don't work hard, but uh, it's uh, definitely more of a, I mean, good athletes are now. You're playing starting to golf. see taller yeah. athletes. Wide bigger, little, yeah, stronger. bigger. Yeah. A little wider in the back. You yeah, know, I'll tell you, in my opinion, I, I think with the technology advancements and then the, the more athletic people, it is a different game now. I, I wish there was a way, in my opinion, the, the golf that I like is more what you're talking about, where it's more strategic. You're, you're thinking your way around the golf course, not just hitting it as far as you can, taking what you get and going from there. I, I really wish there was a way that we could kind of get back to that, and I know that's a big topic with, with various. Yeah, know, Lee Trevino said that uh, best probably said, you don't have to make golf courses 7,800 yards. You just got to right. make it 25 yard mm -hmm. first put rough up about like that and that'll yeah. stop a lot of that stuff real quick they just have some trouble out there and uh, yeah that the uh courses there's still a few courses out there that they play on the regular tour that uh harbor town mm -hmm. you know they've been playing there for a long long time and they really don't chew it up like you think they would. right but it's a like a plotter's course I yeah mean, it's tight and uh, you gotta hit it in right yeah yeah so 
Go ahead. If you don't mind, let's kind of start out with a little bit of your background as far as getting getting into golf. I know you took a little bit of uh, untraditional approach, I guess, as far as get, starting your professional career. So if you don't mind, kind of give us a little bit about your background, what got you into golf, and then advancing into the pro level. Well, my dad started uh, playing golf when he was probably, I think, uh, 23, which would make me three. Yeah. And so he started taking me to the golf course with him. He started at this little butler kitchen putt there in Austin. Oh, yeah. And the longest hole was probably 105 yards. Okay. But when you're a little kid, I mean, that seemed like a long hole. Right. And uh, so he took me, and uh, apparently I liked the game a lot. And I uh, played high school golf, college golf. Well, I went to Texas for a year. And then I had a daughter and so I kind of didn't really play much golf for the next four or five years then my dad went out of business we had a stone business then I became a club pro okay. and I was a club pro for uh, I want to say 10 years okay. and, uh, in Austin in Austin okay. different courses then went to a range found out that teaching was a lot harder than I thought it was <laughs> you have to have some patience I don't but, uh, well, you have to be really good, so you don't have to worry about it, buddy. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, I was probably 34 years old or 35, and I just didn't want to be 50 at a bar like Bone Daddy and say, you know, talk about yeah, that's playing golf. Yeah. You know, I wanted to go Thank you. and see if I could do it. And that way, if I was sitting at this bar and somebody says, hey, we talked about golf, I said, yeah, I made it or I didn't make it. Right. And fortunately for me, that you know, I had a decent career out there, and uh, you know, hmm. I won on the regular tour, and I won a couple times on the senior tour. So yeah, you know, it makes uh, you know everything that I did in my life. It seems like it turned out okay. Yeah, yeah, and I I definitely understand, and I'm not comparing myself to you in any way at all, but I know. I moved to Florida right after high school, and I tried to play some mini tour stuff, and I, I tried to go there, and that's probably the one regret is I moved back. It worked out, but I came back because I had a scholarship, and I wanted to use yeah. that scholarship, so I moved back home uh, to Arkansas and got my degree, but there's still that thing in the back of my head, what if I would have stayed? What if I would have stayed and just kept grinding and kept trying to do that? What what would have happened? And uh, So I admire that. I think that's that's awesome that you you, you – you went, you went for it, and obviously it worked out really well. So It did for awesome. me. You know, the golf's uh, a very expensive sport mm -hmm. to try to play. You're not and, kidding. Uh, you know, luckily for me, I found a sponsor that, I mean. Is that the guy from uh, Lake Cliff, Bill. our buddy? Yeah, oh, yeah. Bill, Bill Thomas. Bill Thomas. He's he a great some, guy. Uh, Sonics throughout the state of Texas. And, okay. You know, I, it was fortunate for me that I found him because I couldn't afford to play golf otherwise. And, uh, you know, the money didn't really mean that much to him. He was doing, he had, his businesses were pretty successful. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it was, I owe a lot to Bill for uh, yeah. helping me to get me to the ground. And I can tell you, that was a, a major thing with me is people don't realize there's so much expense oh, yeah. involved. I mean, your travel expense, your yeah. entry fees, and on top of that, you're not working for what you're doing. You're not making a paycheck from a job to, to cover that. So it's a lot of... A lot and of expenses. So I guess while we're on that topic, what would be your advice if you if, say you got somebody that's early twenties, they think they're good enough, and and maybe they are good enough. What would be your advice uh, as far as trying to take that next step and advance your career, trying to play golf? In my opinion, like the way I did it, I think that you got to go play a tour, uh, play golf. A lot of people try to chase the four spotters or right. Right. rabbits get on the you know and nah, no you're problem. not going to get in very many of those tournaments so and your expenses are real expensive even if doing that way yep right and oh yeah so i mean heck throughout the year say you do 20 something of those you might get into one yeah so you're playing one week right my the way i went after it i did it different i thought i'm gonna play a mini tour i'm gonna play it all year long and get ready for tour okay. and i felt like if we were playing golf similar to what tour golf is you kind of get used to what you're doing right and so that's what my advice when i talk to these young guys and stuff they ask me what i said play golf be tournament golf yeah now playing golf with your buddies is a lot different than playing tour golf exactly you know every shot counts yep. uh, you know and 
Uh, a lot of guys can go out and with their buddies and shoot pretty good rounds, then, but they don't really, their game don't travel well. It's, right. And uh, I don't think there's any substitute for turning the Yeah. Me. No, I 100% agree. I no, tell you that. No, man, I'm telling you the same. No, 100%. The, last, the last thing I did was probably, I don't know, three, four years ago, I did a Monday qualifier for a web.com tournament in Springfield, Missouri. I went, I shot a, I think I ended up shooting a 69 or something like that. And I was in 75th place. <laughs> I mean, and I just, I realized I, I would have to play a lot. And, and just like you're saying, under those yeah, conditions, too, I could play know? at home all every day, all day, yep. and then go there. It's a different game when you're in those conditions, under those circumstances. So I completely understand. I, I agree 100%. It's, a lot of people don't understand the difference between playing golf in a little skins game for your local club versus trying to really yes, play it. Yeah, totally different. Yeah, absolutely. You know, like, again, for me, it's a money deal. It's, uh, I mean, tough to play golf without any money. And uh, we, uh, you know, like I had Bill, I told him, I said, hey, I could know after three years whether I can play or not. Right. I'll be done. Right. If I don't make it after three years. But I noticed every year I was getting better and better and better. And then the third year came along and he, I go, he comes to me and says, are you going to quit? And I said, well, you know, Bill, I said I was going to quit after three years. But, man, I surely am playing a lot better. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I said, and, but he gave me the opportunity to keep going. And that's the other thing that a lot of guys, my point is that a lot of guys don't give enough time. Right. You know, three years seems like a long time, but, man, it's, you learn so much every time you play golf. Right. And, uh, you know, it's just, yeah. it's a tough one. So how long, once you decided to make that make that run and go for it, how long was it before you got your, your, your tour card? Well, I played on the mini tours for three years. And then I made it to the finals of the tour school, and I got status on the web. Okay. And I was on the web for, I think, two years. And then I got, uh, I was a 40-year-old rookie. Okay. So, you know, it uh, took me a while. Yeah. I finally got there. And uh, unfortunately, I was hurt my rookie year. And I only played, I don't even remember, 10, 12 tournaments. Okay. But uh, I had a major medical for the next year. Cool. And... Uh, I ended up winning in Las Vegas uh, that year. And then, you know, when I met Matt, I was actually hurt. Uh, yeah. I played in 07, I played, again, maybe 10 or 12 tournaments. Got hurt, and I didn't really play competitive golf for six years. Yeah. And, uh, during that time was oh, when I, I met Matt. Yeah, we, we met with the first, uh, we set up a lesson. There was your buddy from, uh, I think he's teaching in Nashville. He's a, he's a, he was a really good player. Uh, you, and you said, hey, I'm going to come out and watch, you know, and um, to see how this goes. I mean, you know, it's a go of it. I mean, you're, you're, your livelihood's on, when you get to work with a tour player, it's not like you're, you can't just go in there and go, oh, yeah, we're going to give you this and this and this and do what you think you want to do. You, you're dealing with their livelihood and their family depends on that so um, I showed Wes what I did and, and so forth with the biomechanics and he you saw it with uh, your friend I know yep. and saw, saw a little bit and you're like man I think I'll try this out and see how see how we get to go I think it took us about a month before we even got to do a lesson because your neck back then it was your neck yeah and you were in bed rest I mean it was like it was a it was a very bad deal and so he comes out and I said, all right, let's get a go of it. And so we, we went at it and he liked it. It was working. Uh, he said, what else you got? We did the kettlebells. We started going on. Working the whole thing, yeah. Whole thing. And uh, we got back rehab quite enough to be able to finally um, compete. You know, we I think you played in the Bob Hope or Yeah, I did. It something. Was, I played, uh, I think, three tournaments in 2009. And then uh, I think you came out to watch in uh, uh, California, uh, and that? I withdrew uh, on the. Is that Buick Open or something like? It that? was. Yeah. And uh, then, then uh, you know, it was another yeah, the, we three we, years or so before. Yeah. I played tour golf again. Yeah, it was. I mean, we tried, and we saw every top of uh, the. You know, we are all kind of stumping, you know, scratching our heads trying to figure it out. And then I think it, it maybe you talk. Did you talk to Fred Couples when you? I did uh, about the Germany. Going he told to Germany. Me I should go over there. Yeah, he, I was watching a show one time, and he uh, said it prolonged his career going over there. And I was just wanting to get out of pain, and yeah. uh, so I talked to Fred, and he said, "Yeah, you need to get over there. They really can help you." Yeah. And uh, so I went over to Germany, 
and at that time I was uh, just turning 49. Yep. And uh, I still had, I think, 16 tournaments left on the regular tour to uh, for my major medical. And it went over there. They fixed me. My back was not hurting, and I went to uh, try to play some golf. And I'm gonna tell you what, I played a lot of golf, a lot of tournaments. Didn't play much during those six years, and I went to the Sony. And when I teed it up, I couldn't believe how nervous I was. <laughs> I couldn't hardly tee it up. I remember that. I mean, I was shaking so bad. And I was thinking, man, what's going on? I've, played, <laughs> I've won on this tour before. And, but, you know, like I said, there's that tournament golf. There's yeah. no substitute for tournament golf. No and, rounds. Uh, the thing that helped me, I played 16 events that year. I didn't really play that great, but it, I was playing. 49 and, as well, too. And uh, so... I got to go to tour school at the end of the year for this senior tour, and that really helped me those 16 tournaments. And uh, I ended up winning the uh, senior tour qualifying school and uh, got me on the senior tour. That was a cool experience. I mean, when, when he went, I was going to, we had a month. We had one, remember, you were, we, we had a, that was the coolest experience I've ever had as a coach. Uh, well, I can't say that because there's there multiple, like, you know, going out to the tour. I mean, I'm there around people, I'm like, oh my God little shell shocked here but I can tell you he comes to me and he says we got one month and I said I need you here at five we had an indoor shop you remember that 5 30 a.m. he gets up way earlier than I do and I was like all right I'll be here and we give it a go until we start you do your PT warm-up first which you have with this physical therapist separate from what we did we go into kettlebells band work we do the bands we go in we only did three exercises with the golf swing three drills and we had that string remember that string? oh yeah it was like three had three things it was like basically keep it uh the club in front of you don't move off the ball and get through the ball on your left side yeah that's what he wanted to do that's yeah. it we did it every day just boom 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 we didn't change anything but the only thing we did add in at the very end i had two things in and it was uh it was an eye opener for me, and I think it was for Wes because we talked about it. But after the turn, after was, yeah, after we won the championship, smoked them. Was we added in the mantras, saying it ten times a day. I'm going to win this oh, yeah. tour champ. Remember that, and uh, the meditation at the end. Remember we would just sit in silence and just we would do through our whole thing, and we would just meditate, both of us, for five minutes. We took the timer on five minutes. Bang, when it's over. And at first, the first two, we had four, we had four weeks of this stuff. Yeah. So the first two weeks, he's looking at me like, or the first week, he's kind of like, yeah, he's a little crazy. He's, <laughs> he's, he may be going off his rocker here. <laughs> but by the second week, he's kind of getting it. The third week, it's like, not a big deal. Fourth week, he's like, I saw a transformation more from the uh, mental than I ever saw from the, the physical. This guy's got the physical all day. But I saw him transform, and I could see him. He was just starting to lock down. I tried to. He, I saw the first day he smokes him at the, in that tournament. It's a four-day event. Was it four days? Yeah. All right. So and then second day he's leading third. And I'm trying to call. I tried to call him once. The next day I tried to call him twice. And it's like they say, if a pitcher's throwing really good, just get out of the way. Yeah. Don't 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 call him. And so I realized. Don't. I didn't call him on Saturday. And on Sunday he won and he smoked him, left him behind. And uh, he, you may have called me or I called you. I don't really know. But we talked right after the event. He said, Matt. You had it right the whole time. And I said, oh, I'm thinking, I'm sitting there thinking, man, I must have come up with something really cool with the technique or something right. I did to see. No, he said, well, you did. He said, I had it won before I ever got there. Like this yeah. tournament, I had this tournament won before I ever got there. And I think you, I don't know if you remember that conversation, but he goes, I had it. He goes, I did stuff like, I had a three wood where I would not hit a three wood. I hit a, I placed my ball like where I wouldn't think. And I don't know why that happened. And it was, uh, it's probably one of the greatest experiences I ever had as a coach because of the fact that I believed in it, but it was kind of like, you, you know, yeah. you got to see it work with, you got to have a thoroughbred too, and it, it makes a difference. But that was, that's great. You've never told me that before. And that's, no. No, I'm, no. I'm I, I can talk about like the mental part of the game, like the physical part of the game, obviously it's got to be there. And I, I, I like that part, but the mental part, not just in golf, with anybody that's successful, I don't care if it's, I don't even care if it's sports. It can be business, it can be whatever. I, I love that. You've never told me that before. Yeah. So that's, I love that story. That's yeah, awesome. It's cool. it pretty neat too. Yeah, you know, uh, I thought it was going to be pretty stupid. Mm -hmm. The part where, you know, he wanted me to get in front of a mirror yeah. every day and say, you're going to win a tournament. You're going to win a tournament. You're going to win a tournament. Or I'm going to win a tournament. But uh, 
you know, I thought, and it, yeah, it's cool. really, you know, when you're looking at yourself in the mirror, it's kind of. You have to deal with it. You, you know. I finally have respect for you, man. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't know this. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't. You have it. Yeah, you do. I don't know. No, it, that cool. was a cool, yeah, it was cool to go of it. And, uh, yeah. and I believed in it. We had a deal that was similar to that prior, and it was, um, I don't know how you do this universe stuff and whatever, how it all works. I certainly don't. It's a little bit more past my wheelhouse, but. I know we had a really serious conversation one time at, uh, I was on, living on Hudson Bend and Tracy and Eden were there and, and he, uh, you called me and said, you know, hey Matt, um, this may be the end of it all. And I know you had a serious, I believe it was thyroid cancer. Yeah. We had dealt with the back for so long, we thought that was the only thing we are dealing with and he had thyroid. And I said, man, just all we're going to do is let's, let's just get after this thing and we're going to going to beat this thing and, and I don't give a shit what we got to do to get this thing done and knocked out but don't and, and this guy don't quit so I knew it wasn't that but I could tell he's finally his soul was, you keep beating on somebody long enough he had so many injuries that was keeping him down and and I said let's just make sure we keep, keep focused and if he didn't do it I did but saying like we're going to play we're going to play we're going to play next thing you know is he gets a he either call spread or couples or I don't know whoever whatever happened and that happened literally probably about eight weeks after that. See, maybe not even that long. Maybe it was like four weeks right after that. We had a conversation because it was the most serious conversation I ever had a call for my entire life because it's your livelihood. And, and I know how much everybody that knows Wesley will tell you that he's, he's he, he, all he knows is he doesn't all he knows is golf, but he, he just loved golf. When you don't play golf, you play golf. When I play golf. When I'm home, I play golf. He plays you golf. Know, I play golf all the time. Yeah. He doesn't I, ever stop. I, in Austin, we have, uh, there's a skins game every day, Monday through Friday, you can play in. And when I'm not playing on the tour, I'm usually playing there. Yeah. And, uh, so, I, I mean, I love golf. And uh, uh, doesn't matter. I, I, and it's fun playing different golf courses. Right. You know, uh, that's another thing I suggest for people to do is just go play. Don't play the course you know so well all the right. time. Play different golf courses. Right. Because, uh, you know, you learn more and more from, from every course. Yeah. It's it's easy to learn to shoot a good score on the course you, you play, play every day. Time. It's a whole different deal to learn to shoot that score on any course you play. That's right. And that's, uh, I mean, being... I've been at two smaller clubs over the last 10 years as a head pro, and, and the, the members that I had, they could shoot really good at home. But if we went somewhere else, people that were shooting 76 every day were shooting 85. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. it was a whole different, they just they knew how to play that course, and that was it. So, yeah, I think that's uh, that's great advice, playing. And that's something I always try to do. Even when I was in Florida, I had a home course, but I tried every week to play at least two courses, two or three courses every week when I wasn't playing tournaments to practice just to get used to that. You get I, more comfortable. I, when I usually, when I play in the, uh, on the tour, we're in a different city, you know, and I usually play the Wednesday Pro-Am, so Thursday I'm looking for a course to play, you know, and I go around and we go play somewhere else on uh, Thursdays. and. Uh, I mean, I, like I said, I just love playing different golf courses. And uh, I told, I told so him that I was like, when he when he gets done playing, he plays golf. Yeah. So wait, let me, so if you're on, you're playing a tournament Friday through Sunday on Thursday, you're playing a different course. Yeah, generally. Wow. It's I mean, crazy. It's, huh. it's fun to. I mean, he you know, we luckily, you know, I travel all over the country, and it's nice to just, like I said, see different golf courses. And uh, you know, I, in my opinion, that. Uh, an eight iron is an eight iron is an eight iron, no matter what course you play, you know, and you just gotta realize that, you know, just cause you're somewhere else, the 150 yards is still 150 yards, no matter where you're at. Huh, that's, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So, kind of getting into your season this last season, you, uh, I mean, not that you played bad in the first part of the season, but it seemed like about midway through, something really clicked for you. Because, I, you know, knowing Matt, we, obviously he talked about you a lot, so I, I was kind of keeping up with you. And then suddenly it, it's like something clicked, and you started having a lot of top 10, a lot of top 20. Uh, you, you were definitely in contention at the uh, Senior Open. Yeah. And then you had your victory there in Canada. So was there something that, that you feel happened that kind of made, maybe you found something, or I don't know what happened, that maybe kind of brought your game to life? Well, you know, I – Really didn't play well at the first of the year. Uh, had one top five, one top. I had a fifth place, I think. At uh, where was it? 
That was early, wasn't it? It was real early. I'm trying to. I could, Fallen Oak was the name that where we played, and uh, it was uh, the rest of you was going not great. You know, actually, to tell you the truth, sounds goofy, but I bought. I saw on this TV. I bought this little putting track, <laughs> and because I hadn't been really putting that great, I've uh, been hitting it okay. But I bought this putting track. It was from inside to straight. And I started using that. And then all of a sudden, I started putting lights out. I didn't hit it any better the second half of the year than I did the first. But I putted a whole lot better. And, uh, you know, when you sit there and you can make 20-footers, I mean, that makes makes your confidence. Then all of a sudden, too, you start hitting it pretty close. And uh, But the putting was the... The huge factor in the second half of the year was, uh, I mean, it doesn't matter how good you hit it. If you can't get it in the hole, you no, can't score. You ain't, making no, you ain't gonna make no money out of uh, it. That was one thing you were you were drilling it. That was man. and uh, you know to, on our tour that generally, I mean, it's you're gonna have to shoot almost 15 under every time to in a three day event to yeah, win yeah. the tournament. And so you better be putting good. Yeah. You yeah. can't hit it good enough to shoot 15 under yeah. Yeah. without yeah. putting. Even your iron dispersion, if you knock it around 15 feet, 10 feet, which isn't, you know, that's impossible. For yeah. all, you can't do it. And, and you got to be knocking them down from 15 to 25 feet. And if you're not making those, you ain't got a chance. But that was the, the difference. And then in Canada, I mean, I did get a, get a good break on 18. I hit a rock no. and it kicked on the <laughs> green. But, you know, you hit, uh, you know how many bad breaks you ever get in your right. life. And uh, then finally... I felt like I was due a good break. You know, the way I look at that, you played 71 holes to put yourself in that position. You in the kid. That one shot didn't make or break that tournament. I no. Mean, it I, looked like it did because it was the last hole, but he had to play 71 people incredible remember. holes. When you, yeah. It was yeah. the last hole. That's why they right, remembered right. so well. Hey, the one thing with Wesley is when he, hits his iron, when he gets his iron game going, it's another level. You know that. I mean, he, doesn't like, he ain't going to tell you that. He ain't going to tell these people that, but I know. He knows. You know, behind closed doors, we know. Like, when he gets his iron game going, he can go, and 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 it, you do have to still make the putts. But I even we had a conversation one day. Like I said, well, you know, I think we talked. I don't know which tournament it was. It might have got twentieth. And I said, uh, looked like your putting was maybe just a shade off. I said, well, I just didn't hit a close one. And but when they get when guys like you know, there's Hendrick Stenson, Justin Rose, and there's you that I always look at and kind of. And when they get that iron play on point. You know, you just get out of the way, and yeah. things are going to, firework going to start happening real soon. Yeah. They can take it so deep. And I think on the tour, I'm not saying beginning golf. Beginning golf better be able to just get it out there in front of you. But on the tour, you better keep that ball around the hole with those irons. You do, because, uh, I mean, it's, I can't remember offhand what the stats are, but if you're 20, 25 feet, your chances of making it are very slim. Yep. I mean, uh, I'm going to say from 10 feet, it might be just about 50%. That's a For best. 20 foot, probably six, seven percent. So if you're hitting it, you know, 20, 25 feet, a lot. Yeah. You might be having, a, you know, the stats wise is good because right. you're hitting a lot of greens, but that's not really makeable. Not really right. makeable putts. Right. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's a. Uh, I don't know. With the stats, a lot of people they just look at. Well, this guy hit 17 greens today. But he may have he may have had forty foot putts all day long. All day so, long, doesn't yeah, matter. Right, I'd rather right, hit yeah. eight greens and hit it three feet five right. times. Exactly. Yeah. You know, yeah that, hit it forty feet yeah. seventeen times. That kind of brings up another a question I was wanting to ask is the difference. I think talent wise, there's a lot. There's a there's a very very fine line between guys that make it and the guys that just barely that barely miss it. And what, in your opinion, what do you think the main difference between the guys that make it and the and the guys that or probably have the talent, but don't quite make it. I'm going to tell you, Drew, I don't know what Matt might think, but I think the, it's short game. You know, I think it's the ability to, I mean, the best players in the world only hit basically about 13 greens around. So, you know, that's around 70-something percent probably. Yeah. And uh, so when you're missing five greens, then par fives, you're – probably getting around the green so there's another four that's nine holes right there that yep. you're having to get up and down yeah. and if you're not a very good chipper 
it makes it hard to get up and down a lot. Right. And I think what separates the top 20 in the world from the 120th in the world is, I think, a short game. I don't know what Matt thinks on that, but. I can't really debate you, man. <laughs> I mean, that short game is unbelievable. I mean, pitching the ball separates, and I call it pitching. I think just chipping. We're chipping, talking, pitching, we're, we're either talking, one. We're, we're talking the same, same yeah. thing, language. But I think that's separate. When I do a golf school, you get them hit the ball and get them driving it and get on it. But if you take and put them behind a bunker, short-sided, flag's about eight feet up on the front, and they're at a little elevated green, tight lie here, go watch and see how many people can hit that shot. Not many. Not very many. Then, you know, the, what short, the other thing with the high handicappers is you can put them basically – almost just right in front of the green five six feet off it may take them forward to get 25 feet they said and there you know yards. and what really makes you laugh and Matt, he teaches a lot so this the only thing they ever want to work on is a driver always yeah oh God. Yep. every time you know when i yeah. used to work at a driving range people come out there first club out of their bag very first shot driver yeah yep and you're going you got to warm up with that, huh? <laughs> yeah. That's how you tell. Generally, you can tell a good golfer on the range right off. They start with the wedges. The bad golfers usually start with the driver. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, you know this, too. I've said this a bunch of times, and I, I know it doesn't matter what I say, but, you know, you go out. If you watch a, say you go to a scramble, four-person scramble, all right, and you got an A, B, C, D player, whatever you want to call it, championship, it doesn't matter, four levels. You see the championship player, they'll hit a 40-yard shot, and it looks just smooth, you know, just bang, bang. You get to the other one in the next level, it's a little bit less bang, it's more hit. You know? hit, hit. By the time you hit the last one, it's whack, and, you know, the ball's like an axe chop. Yeah, look out. I mean, you know, everybody's ducking and covering it. And uh, by the time, how are you going to hit a, you ain't going to hit a driver. I mean, how's it? <laughs> you can't go take a full swing and, you know, make it all of a sudden a miracle. You know, if you can't, I always think if you can, I can always judge a really high level player by how they swing that club with a wedge 50 yards, let's say. And because if it looks like it, they're topping it, janking it, and hitting it fat every time, I don't want necessarily want them on my team. <laughs> well, you know, it's real simple too. If you can't hit a 30 yard shot, how can you hit a 150 yard shot? It doesn't make sense, does it? It's it ain't hard. gonna get better as you go swinging harder. No. Some of the, I, the, different kids that I've worked with that were trying to make it to that college level, I would always tell them, you're you're trying to make it to a college level. So obviously you're good enough where your shots are going to be on or around the green every time, along with everybody else you're competing against. What you do with it from there, that's going to determine who goes and who doesn't. That's exactly and right. so many, and even the, the kids that I would work with, they do that. They want to go on the range. Maybe they don't want to hit driver, but they're hitting irons all day. They go putt for three minutes before they tee off, yeah. and that's all they do. Uh, their, their scores, they get to a point where they get down to the maybe the mid low 70s, and then they never, that's where they stay. They stay right yeah. there. The difference is the few kids that I've had that almost reverse that or split that time in half where you're spending equal time on the putting green, chipping green, and the driving range, those are the kids that they you start seeing them getting down into the 60s. And, you see their scores and starting to fall. Right, right. Did Definitely. you bring your training aid with you, the, the putting aid you're working with? Yeah, I'm curious no, about I didn't. That. No. Okay, that's all right. I didn't. I'm no. just curious. I mean, that's interesting, though, that, that I know, like, your putting, man, I mean, My putting has been, man. Uh, was Smooth. unbelievable the last half of the year. And, you know, I got to just thinking one day, I go, you know, you work on your golf swing, a putting deal is a mini swing. Yeah, it's a so, swing. So, I mean, if I can get where I can do it consistently – then the ball is going to react consistently, and then I should be able to at least yeah. hit it where I'm aiming. And uh, I mean, the, the first tournament I got that uh, training deal with, I'm, it was just like that. I started putting instantly better. Wow, that's awesome, and, man. Uh, I got to see this training. Yeah, it's uh, it's like one of those momentous deals. It's a yellow arc deal about this long. You tee it into the ground. Oh, the, and, yeah, I've seen that yeah, thing. And, uh, you told and, me about it. I just didn't know what you're talking about. Okay. Yeah, you just you put a couple. After you get it lined up, you know, you put you it. Stake it down a little and, bit. And uh, you should make every putt once you get it on the right line. Because it's Damn. the same. You're making. You're against the rail, so you're making the exact right. same stroke every time. How, how nervous were you uh, when you had to make that? Uh, it looked like a, a, at least three feet on the yeah. Canada. It was. 
Yeah, yeah and downhill. Three and a half foot, mm -hmm. and probably, and it looked like about 12. And uh, to you, but you know it. Uh, the putt that really, you know, I don't uh, if y'all watch the tournament or what, but on 17, uh, I, I hit it about 30 feet short on that hole of the flag, and I putted it by about five feet, maybe six. Which hole? Number 17. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I, I mean, I buried that putt right in the heart yeah. and then you know uh but i was so confident with my putting it didn't really matter you yeah. know when i'm but i'll tell you that my heart was beating yeah. on that three and a half yeah. footer i if anybody says they're not they're lying or I dead i remember we i was i don't remember where we were, we were at my we were, wife and i we were driving home from somewhere and i pulled it over and made her drive so i could watch he, it on he my, was on texting me back yeah, he, we were just going back and forth man oh shit, yeah, you know, it was, it was just cool. firing away but yeah. it was uh i mean you know been five years since I won, and uh, I mean, I had chances and stuff, but it's hard, you know. There's uh, out there, there's there's a lot of good Technically, players. you won three times, really, if you look at it, because you won the tour. 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 That's a thing, you're, you're not playing against there's five is, spots on that deal. That's a hard deal to get through. You're not a kid, you got five spots. That was he just came to me. That was going back. I don't want to go back into that a whole lot, but he was like, I got, and that's I'll never forget it. Like, you were focused, like. Like this is just as my mission, and, he didn't, and I don't. It didn't matter who was involved in helping him get to do what. It did not matter. He just said it was on a mission. We got to get in this thing. That's it. I'm gonna show up. You show up. And we went at. It. We gave it a go of it every single day. We went at that thing pretty hard. It was in you Very know it, it, uh, hardest I ever trained with anybody. In my it life. was. Uh, it paid off. I'd say, yeah. <laughs> so. What, who is there one person that you would say in your whole career, everybody you've played with, that you would say is the person that is by far the best, or maybe not by far, but the person you can honestly say is the best player you've ever played with? Uh, yeah, I bet it's I pretty answer. easy. Yeah. <laughs> I've played with Tiger Woods. <laughs> and uh, All right. it was, uh, you know, and you know what separates him, like I was saying a while ago, what separates He don't, I don't, it's going to sound stupid, but I don't think he really hit the ball any better than I did. Yeah. But he, his short game is unbelievable. And, you know, the guy don't ever miss a putt when he needs to make it. And him to go how many every years it was without ever missing a cut. I mean, people don't realize how tough that is. I mean, I, mean, I played on the tour. There's a, sometimes I thought I played pretty good and I missed a cut. And he goes, what, five years or something without yeah, ever missing like a cut. That. Yeah. It's a and he was only playing the, the bigger the, tournaments. I mean, he don't play I mean, no little tournaments. Yeah, exactly. people don't factor that in. He's playing the best field every Best time players, players in the world every time. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, i got to give him a lot of credit. He, uh, and, you know, I did, was a little bit too young or something to watch Palmer, Palmer, and yeah. Nicholas. I mean, I watched him a little bit, but uh, Tiger Woods is uh, unbelievable. I mean, yeah. By far the best in his era that there there was, yeah. in my opinion, so far. Yeah. Yeah, that's. I, I was fortunate enough when I was when I lived in Florida. I was friends with the assistant pro at Outward, where Tiger lived. So I got to go watch him just go through some practice sessions a few times, and I could stand beside it behind him on a range watching him hit balls. I could do that all day long. Hey, it's just it's incredible. And watching him just he going to the the practice area, the short game area, and watching him practice. I. I'm like, I would pay admission. I mean, big time admission just to go. We'll get to a watch that. It's Phenomenal. Great. I played yeah. with him a couple of rounds, and uh, it was, I mean, well, the other thing that he does so well, too, is that, uh, you know, he hits a four iron like most people hit a wedge. He hits kidding. it up in the air. It goes a long way, and when it hits the green, it doesn't roll very far. Yeah. You know, I remember we were playing at uh, – at Palmer's uh, tournament, Bay Hill. Bay Hill. We got to the, uh, I think it's 17th hole, or is it 16th, 17th hole? It's par three. Par three. Yep. And he hit a five iron, and I hit a four iron. I hit this four iron, I mean, I hit a really good shot, never left the flag, landed probably eight feet short of the flag, and went some 35 feet back. He hits his five iron, lands eight feet short of the hole, stays short of the hole. I yeah. mean, but I, you know, it's. I think it's a lot too where you grow up. I mean, I yes. grew up in Texas, very windy. I'm a low ball hitter, right, right, right. and he's a a high ball hitter. Two, 
uh, Turn League of the Year is probably 01, oh, I'm guessing 05. Two of the wins at Bay Hill. I watched them play. I was standing there and watched them. Walked with him on 16, 17, 18 yeah. coming in. And I know on uh, on 17, I sat there in one of those rounds and watched several people hit into the green. And if they flew it on the green, they went off the back. Off the back. That's that, what I that did. That back right pin placement. Yeah. And when he came in, his ball, just what you said, it hit and it just stopped right there. Yep. It came in from out of orbit. I mean, oh. you, know, you can't even see it, and it just felt like it came straight down. It wasn't coming this way. It came straight down. Hit it, it hard, I can hit a wedge. Yeah. And straight. And, I mean, it is. It's, you know, it's like him and uh, there's a few of them, Mickelson and VJ Singh, they all hit their long irons really, really high. Yeah. And, uh, you know, makes it really – when the hot greens are firm, it makes it easier for them to stop it. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's cool. I didn't realize you'd ever played with them before. So I think I know who you have, like your favorite swing. Before you, I know when you're playing out there, it's your, you know it's your college. When you're out there, you're, you know it's a competition or whatever. So it wouldn't be college, but uh, it wouldn't be Tiger Woods probably. It would be. Oh, I'm just curious guy. who it is. Uh oh, well, Ed just snuck in. Oh my God. <laughs> Get out of here. Got to run him off. <laughs> Uh, you know, we talked a little bit a while ago about Larry Bizer's swing. I yeah, mean, yeah. that thing is just silky. Isn't it? I mean, so good to watch. I mean, it's so smooth. But there's a you know another Davis player, Love. Davis it? Love, that, another one, Adam Scott. Yep. You know, he's got a, a very good golf swing in my opinion. And uh, fundamentally, it's just like bang, bang, bang. I, mean, I don't see how he ever hits it off line. I don't either. I don't either. You, you can't. I mean, even to teach, you can't. You can't really even teach that hardly. No. How would you go about that? But then you got like Matt. What I like is uh, I like the weird swings because I always I Who? always I like weird swings. Oh I yeah. Because like like Chi Chi Rodriguez, like you take an old Chi Chi, that dude could hit anything. But you know he hit he practiced hitting acorns with sticks. He didn't have range, but he didn't have no mm -hmm. money. And that's how he learned how to play golf was taking a stick and hitting acorns and making them fly the way he wanted. Now, you can take a little stick and hit an acorn. And yeah, you make got it fly. some hand eye coordination. That's you for got sure. something going on. But the thing too with those what you said a uh, little bit weird swings is uh you know if a person is to make the same golf swing every time no matter what it is they and to have the same result it's easy to play that way yeah you don't have a hundred checkpoints either that's right you so know, if and, you got a matt wolf he's gonna go i'm gonna take it right over here and slam that thing back down yeah and you know a lot of teachers nowadays would probably say like furick or that matt wolf i mean they'd probably screw them up Oh, yeah. Because they try to change them yeah. to be more traditional-looking yeah. swings and yeah. may run. Yeah. I'll tell you, that, you guys know a lot more than I do. The one thing I see with the, you know, obviously the obvious example is Jim Fury, Matt Wolf. Right. Yeah. That's how he beat in the playoffs. They, Sorry, Jim. There's a hundred <laughs> different ways to get there, but everyone on the, at that level at impact. That's all that matters. Probably about similar. a foot before yeah, yeah. Impact's impact. All that matters. And the exit You're not a kid. You've been a kid. I'd say that little zone there. Yeah. Uh, no matter how you really take it back, it's just how you get through it. No. In yeah. my opinion. Yeah. I mean, I don't know near as much as Matt does, but you know. I'm, I'm by far on the low end of this total <laughs> pole right here. But. Uh, they, Larry Miles, it does go. I, I tell you one thing about Larry Miles though is his putting stroke. I could just sit there and watch Larry Miles putt for. I, I mean, everything I mean, he does is so me. smooth. It's unbelievable. It, and it rolls. It's not like when he puts that slow, like he's, and his ball doesn't go. His ball goes no, it, flying. it goes however far he needs to hit it. Yeah, it doesn't matter, does it? He's uh, I'm not, only Ben Crenshaw. Maybe I've seen, and you, you and you got a really good. You got a, you got your stroke in order now. Where it, it's a lot like, better. I mean, uh, uh, like I said, it's the best I ever putted was these last uh, probably three months. Yeah, I ever putted in my life. I told. Well, I mean, I've been a streaky right. putter. Yeah, where you putt good for a while. Right. You know, a couple weeks or three weeks or whatever. But uh, I've been putting really well. So with that, with well that, too. that eight or with your putting stroke, are you more inside, square, it's inside? A little bit in, it's a little bit inside to square is what it is. And, okay. uh, but that probably feels out to a lot of people, you know what I mean? It probably you does. Know, I, I think we both, me and you both got measured by, what was that one dude's name that worked with? Uh, Marius. Uh, Tiger. Yeah. He turned, yeah. So I remember I got on there, I'd take it back like this, and it was out a little bit, and it was like that and I thought I, I would have swore it was just you know what I mean I would have bet money that's how you yeah two weeks good. ago you were working with me I was I've been putting terribly and 
you were telling me I was bringing it outside and you put the board down and just yep. trying, not even really bringing it inside, just trying to keep it straight back, I felt like I was going to hit my right foot. Kind of yeah. I mean, it was in my, it's just because mm -hmm. I trained myself to see yeah. that as, I as right. Wrong. And he doesn't do it now. I mean, I don't want to get stuff going, but I remember he, he, they had him, and I was practicing the same stuff because I was like, because he kind of turned me on to all this stuff and it really was awesome. I mean, but he, he, you know, it'd kind of be like this at first. Remember how we had to do oh, yeah. hit the outside ball or the inside ball on those two ball drills? I think yep. you showed me that drill. Yeah. Uh, two ball. You put two balls together and to, yeah, you know, right here, two balls. if the outside ball goes first, that means you're released on the putter. Good. If the inside ball goes first, that means you kind of healed it. Right. And, uh, you know, that was a drill that I practiced a lot and uh, it makes you release the putter, which yeah. is... In my opinion, the only way you can become a good putter yeah. is you have to release yeah. it. Yeah. When I watch you putt now, and you know it, I don't want to get too much into it because it's already there, but I mean, it's I see swing, this putter head swinging. You know, it's not like you're trying to manipulate it or anything. It's swinging. And, and that, that training aid, and whoever, I know Chris DeCaratry works with you, I think, too. Uh, he does. Is that right? Yeah, on the putty. But Chris is a, he's a wizard. On, he, Chris helped me a lot. He learned Big a lot time. from Marius, and uh, uh, he teaches it very well now himself. Yes, he and, does. Uh, you know, the other thing that I do sometimes putting is, uh, you know, the most important part of putting is getting the ball in line. And so what I do a lot too, I'll put a tee out there like three feet from me and try to hit the tee. You know, if you can hit the tee consistently, that means you're at least hitting it where you're looking. You mean you, know, you put a tee, like, I'm just saying, like from here to there, we put a tee out from where tee. you're putting. And that's all I try to do is hit the tee. That's it. And, uh, you know, if you are got a 20-footer and you can't get it online, I mean, no it ain't trouble. even going in. No. no so, chance. you know, I think that's another thing that's really important in the putting is hitting it on the intended line you mean to. Yeah. And so if you put a tee out there, I mean, it might not be three feet, probably two feet. But if you can get it online early, it's going to be on, you know, your – you know, if you read it right, you got a chance to make it. You got no chance of making it. It's not online. So That's you're right. Speed you're, you got a tee two or three feet out from the ball, but you're hitting a 20 foot putt. Correct. To hit the tee. I got you. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Makes sense because the ball has time. If you only did it a foot, it, could, it wouldn't ever have to get offline. Right. But three feet, that spin's going to get offline. It can get offline. If you're in at 20. Mm -hmm. You know, that's feet. one thing I uh, check sometimes when I haven't really putted well. I want to see if it's my reading or am I hitting where I'm looking. You know, so if I put that tee out there and I'm hitting the tee every time, that's a pretty simple deal. I know I'm hitting it where right, I'm looking, right. so I'm not reading them very well. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, that's then you just got to read them better and uh, play more or less break, whatever, however you're missing them. So when you load. read putts, I mean, the one thing uh, Harvey Pinnock said, and I, I want to get your opinion. I know you had less than Harvey Pinnock. We may go into that. That would be up to you. But when – Reading greens, is, it's really, I mean, we've got all kinds of stuff now, you know, all the, it gets a little crazy, but, you know, but your feet and your eyes are really pretty much your best senses you got. And I think your eyes are, for sure. Eyes for sure. And, you know, you know it's like, you can, you can aim 20 feet right, let's just say, but your eyes know where the ball wants to go. So, you, you're aimed over here 20 feet. Your eyes are going to make you hit it towards whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you you're know, going to. to. It happens at full swing. You know, Anything, box, really. Tee box like this, and you, your yeah. fairway's over here. The tee box like that, and you're thinking, well, you know, the target, you're going to try to get it over there, but you, you can't get, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I try to tell people all the time, your eyes are going to take your hands where to go. Yes, Whether you they want do. to or yes. not, it's going to happen. That's like if you line better 50 feet. yards right and you're looking over here, you know, your body's going to do whatever it needs to do to try to get it to where Especially they Especially a, yeah. a great player, for sure, will yeah. use their eyes to win that game. Because they and know that's they, why but you can aim right. You could hit, you could be aimed over here and you go, you know the target's over here. Elite player. You're going to make go, a. That dude, he, a good. It's going to make some kind of path to get over there. And that's why. Uh, like, you're you in a beginner player, a low level amateur that hits a big slice. They aim for if they're right-handed, they aim farther left. Oh, trying to no play doubt. the slice, they're going to hit a bigger slice. Bigger slice. They're just yep. going to open that thing up, and their hands are going to push out toward the target. They get a little higher, a little higher until they hit you it. you got to usually aim to the way you're missing. Exactly. Yes, exactly. That's, what the hard, <laughs> that's the hardest thing, though, isn't it? It really is. It's almost yeah. like a crisscross, isn't it? You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Well, this game is a game of opposites. opposites. If, you want, if you want to hit it left, aim right. If you want to hit it right, yep. aim left. You want to shoot the lowest number, not the highest number. Everything's opposite. In this yes, game. it is. Yes, no, no doubt about it. And if you're fighting a slice, you better try to figure out a hook to yep. bounce that thing <laughs> out. Yep. 
Until it becomes one. <laughs> yeah. Right. So what uh what's your your next event now? Obviously we're going into November, so probably a little downtime. And then uh, when do you start gearing up for the 2020 season? It's uh, I leave uh, January the 12th. Go to uh, Hawaii. to okay. get playing the Tournament of Champions, which is always a nice start, not, not especially bad. in Hawaii. Yeah. You know it's probably 85 degrees there every day when <laughs> Austin is probably 40. Yeah. So I'm gonna guess the family might take interest in they're that They're going. Yep. I think I'm gonna have to finish in the top ten to break even for the week. Get, right. Yeah, Gail <laughs> might right. leave a week or two early. <laughs> <laughs> You taking that's the grandbaby fun. out too? Yes. Oh, that whole family. Going. That's awesome, man. That is good. good for That'd you, be man. fun. Uh, get her to. Best part of that there. tournament is called Tournament of Champions. Yes. <laughs> it means you won. Yeah. You, yeah it's, you, don't uh, you don't just go to that one. You got to earn your. I way don't think in. we can get that's in right. that event. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's special. Yeah. But, uh, and they treat you great there at that event, too. I mean, not that they don't treat you pretty nice at every event, but there is uh, something special. They, yeah. uh, you know, the uh, I'm probably going to sneak uh, one of her little clubs onto my, in my bag. I better remember to take it out. Uh, she might be out there playing. Uh, she'll, the for I mean, she'll be definitely hitting some balls on that range. Yeah. So that'd be fun. I, uh, How old is she? She's just turned three. Okay. Perfect. It looks like she's going to be a gamer too. I hope so. Yeah. Be nice to, uh, you know. Uh, she asked me to take her to the golf course quite a few times uh, the last couple of weeks. So oh, yeah. I've been off, and uh, she seems to really like it. So I hope she, I hope she likes it like I do. Yeah. Be fun to play with your granddaughter. Yeah, and, and you said that she she pretty much, you know, like I was we were talking earlier about my dad, your dad. You, you know, uh, I started at four, you started at three. Um, I, then I never, my dad never had to say, you know, hey son, come on, we're going to the golf course. I'm like, calling at his hip, <laughs> you know, get me out there. Or very disappointed when he didn't. Oh, crying you. like a baby. Yeah, you know, like, well, you know, well, I was. why didn't I get to go? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know. It's, you know <clears throat> And, uh, you know, when they're, they're like that, you know, they got the go of it, you know, and it'll be awesome. Yeah. Strong legs. She's going to be she's gonna be a gamer. Yeah. I think she's going to have a pretty good teacher. Yeah. Well, I don't know about all that, but I may find somebody. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think you'll probably be in good hands. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, speaking of junior golf, you know, I'm excited about tomorrow. We've got the, the junior tournament out at the champion circle at our course, and uh, we're going to – really try to be a little bit more involved than just a regular junior tournament really going to try to get get involved and help them we got players from all levels coming tomorrow from basically first time tournament players yeah, up to advanced time, yeah. tournament, junior tournament players so um doing anything we can to kind of help them be more comfortable learn uh, as far as rulings all kind of different things so i'm really excited about that and then of course you're going to be uh, on site tomorrow to do the uh, the kind of clinic for all of our, our guests and uh, ball striking uh, really, really appreciate that. Yeah. yeah, just kind of full ball striking demonstration. So uh, I think tomorrow is going to be a great day. And Michael, hey, Michael, <laughs> we've got I, I, someone we really hadn't introduced, and I want to kind of bring him in. This is Michael Miller. This is our assistant pro at the course. And when we do these podcasts, a lot of times he's stuck working the pro shop. So I'm going to kind of bring him in and, and he's uh, he does a lot of lessons, does a lot of teaching here at our facility at, at Champion Circle. And yeah, if you don't care, Michael, kind of give a little bit about your background, kind of introduce yourself to everyone and let, let them know kind of where, what you've done and your history in the golf. Sure. So, uh, just as I said, my name's Michael. Uh, first of all, I want to say uh, it's, it's an honor to meet you, Wes. Thank you. Um, you too. I, I actually have been in golf since about 2014. I graduated from the Golf Academy of America. And I've been working in golf. Um, my first job was actually, I, I worked at uh, Jim McLean Golf Center in Fort, oh, really? in Fort Worth. Oh, yeah, nice. so so that's kind of where I started out. And then I've kind of been around and about since then. So it's been good to, to work under Jesse and, and get to know Matt a little bit. So it's been a good time. Yes, it has. Um, like, like Jesse said, I've, I've had some time, you know, teaching myself and, and I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed being in the golf industry and uh, the Golf Club of Champion Circle has been real good to me. So. Um, it's been great to work for you guys. So, let's it. talk a little bit about your military history. I just want to know. I want you know, if you don't mind, not not the history of it, but you're in the army. Is that right? Yeah. So, um, from 2005 to 2012, I was in, I was in the army. I, I was an infantryman. Uh, served in, in Iraq and Afghanistan. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, so I did that. Thank you, thank you, for you very much. So, when I got out of doing that um, in 2000, late 2012, I, I really had no idea what I was going to do with the rest of my life. So. I played golf since I was about 10 years old, and I've always 
love the game. I'm a historian of the game, and I decided that you know what? Why not? Why not kind of try and build a career out of this? So that's that's the direction that I took it. You know, I went to school for it, and uh, I've loved every minute of it. You know, so yeah. I really like the military it. stuff. Uh, I'm my golf bag is a bolt of honor. Awesome. And Good. Uh, you know, uh, they're a great organization and. Uh, I mean, I, military, I don't think, gets enough respect in this country, you know. People kneeling, I probably get in trouble for saying that, but, you know, I don't think anybody should ever kneel uh, in anything when they're doing the anthem and stuff with the flag. But, uh, that's, that's my own opinion. You get in no. trouble, I'll get in trouble with you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I would too. Yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll say that, you know, today's veterans are treated a lot better than they probably were, you know, in, in different times. Yes. Um, but there, no doubt there's, there's politics involved in and a, a lot of people have their opinions, and you know they are what they are. But but overall, you know, I would say my experience being a veteran, I, I really have not been treated badly. And um, you know, I love everything about my country. And you know, you're in Texas, concerned. man. That's one reason. In the right state. <laughs> what? I said, you know, you're in the right state. You're in yeah, Texas, yeah, man. Yeah, I'm serious. So te no, Texas no, is no, the no, right no, state to be you're in. The right, no, I'm absolutely. Serious. So cool. and, um, uh, everybody here seems to to be incredibly generous to veterans everywhere you go for the most part so yeah and you know he's got a he's got we were talking about larry moz he's got a sweet swing i do yeah he does it's smooth i yeah, try you know uh um, smooth i i've i played since i was a kid obviously and, and i've worked on my swing and and I, you know it really probably took me till i was 28 29 almost 30 to really start understanding the dynamics of the golf swing you know i started i went to school and, and started learning more about it and everything and I've always been athletic and everything, but um, you know, I I take pride in the way my swing looks. It doesn't always work out the best on the course, though. So, but you know, I try my best. That's all you can do. When I can get out and play, I do. You know, we work in golf. We don't get to play all that much. It's amazing. Uh, so. People think you know you're an assistant golf pro. You get to play every day of the week. Mm. You're lucky you can play twice a week. Absolutely. No. Yeah. yeah. No doubt about it. Yeah. One yeah. thing about I Michael. Can, go, oh, go ahead. No, I can say I can tell you from. My plans for next year, you and I are going to play a lot more golf. I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. It's These plan. last two months have been t I've played twice, probably, in the last Jess two is a good player, too. And, he, can, uh, he can hit it. I went out and hit balls yesterday. I can tell you I will not be participating in your demonstration tomorrow. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was pretty ugly. But, yeah, I want to play definitely a lot more. You need to be playing a lot yeah. more. So we're well, you know, the there. only bad thing about golf is the only way you get any better is by playing. That's right. Yes. You know, if you don't have time to play, you know, that's another thing, you know, you you see uh, 18, 20 handicappers, they get to play once a month, yeah. and they yeah. want to get their handicap lower. It ain't happening. Right. That's no, right. it's you know, not. Never going to happen. They can no. take lessons and all that. If you play once a month, yeah. it ain't all matter who yes. takes, I mean, teaches I, in you. In my man. opinion, again, it, I mean, golf's one of the hardest sports there is. It's yeah. the most yep. challenging yeah. sport there is. I've been, the only bad thing about golf, too, ain't nobody else to get mad at. That's the only bad thing. That's it. Yeah, it's just, yeah, you can't pass it. the ball, you can you? You get pissed off about, yeah. <laughs> you know, it takes yeah. a ton of practice. I know that. Yeah, you, I've, I've got a background in, in personal training and fitness. It's the same way. You can't work out twice a month and get in shape. No, that's Golf's right. Golf's the exact same way. You got to play. You got <clears> to <throat> play, man. You got to put those rounds on the yeah. board, man. Practice and practice. I call it round accumulation. I, I've always believed in that. We've talked about it. You get, and I think there's two things that run, you know, and I, we're talking at a high level here, but. Uh, that two things that run a tour player off the off the tour. There's two things. Uh, well, one you got to get there, so you got there probably through round accumulation. But one of them is a major swing change, and it doesn't work. That's one. The probably the first one though is an injury. And we know you see those two things happen because what happens? It takes away your round accumulation. You can't play, or if somebody's working a swing change or just hitting balls every day. They never play. They lose that round, that competition round, like what you're talking about, and then they start to lose confidence. When if you're injured, you can't play, and you lose rounds. Right. And you that round accumulation, man. I I, I don't I, I don't have a study on it, but I I tell you I believe in it 100. percent You watch somebody come up from high school, college, and they come up and they're playing all these rounds of golf, and all of a sudden they play mini tour golf, and they come back up and they keep playing. They work themselves all that. Hundreds and hundreds of rounds of golf going on turns into thousands and thousands. You can't you can't teach somebody how to play. If somebody has a five thousand rounds of, uh, of golf in their under their belt, I don't care how good that player is. You can't beat them at hundred. Yeah. Somebody comes in at hundred, they can be the best talented most. People. You can't beat yeah. that guy. If you got five thousand. To add to that, it's something you and I have talked about a lot. Is you can spend ten hours a day on the range and never play golf. 
it's different. You've got to get out and play golf. You have to. If a guy course. played every day and a guy practiced every day, I'd take the guy played every oh, day absolutely. every time. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yep. Especially if they play for money. Because, I mean, you learn how to score out on the golf course. Yep. You know, that's the other thing I see a lot of people do is they practice a lot, which is okay. But then when they get to the golf course, you got to play golf. They yeah. don't play golf. They're still trying to work on stuff that they did on the range. Yeah. You just got to let it happen out on the golf course. Yeah. You know, you can't take what you're doing out there and think about it all the time. You just got to let it happen. Yeah. I mean, I mean perfect example of that this year for me, I was, I would hit balls maybe especially earlier in the year. I'd hit balls maybe once a day, every other day, but I didn't get, I just never had a chance to get on the course. So I hit balls every day and I would be, I mean, I would hit every shot. I thought, boy, I'm hitting good right now. You know, the course and certain, certain, suddenly I'm trying to guide the ball. <laughs> and I'm trying to hit shots where on the range, there's no consequence. There's no repercussion to hit the bad shot. So drag another one over. So I get on the course yeah, and then all of a sudden right? that swing is gone. So yeah, you've got you've got to take it to the course and then, Trust what you're doing. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's what you got to do. The range is generally wide open, you know. Yes. So there's a, there's a lot more to think about when you actually have uh, have something water, in the way, water, trees, trees whatever it is. So you're gonna get a little bunker over there at a corner. Yeah. I hit a bad shot on the range. There's probably 40 yeah. more balls sitting yeah. out there. I can reload. Knock no one over the back of the green. It goes 50 yards over, and you got a flop shot. You're never gonna ever gonna get there. You know. Yeah. You're in right. jail. Yeah. You're not thinking about yardages either, really, all that often. You know, when you hit, when you hit your basic, you know, if you're hitting stock shots. You're looking for for places to hit it, but you're not really thinking about if that the green's there. Where if I'm going to hit the front, the middle, the back, the green, what, what I'm really aiming for. Yeah, so. and that's something we've been working on is getting more targets on our driving range. It was when I first came here, it was wide open. I mean, it was basically just a field. There was nothing out there at all. So trying to get more yard, more targets, more specific yardage, yardage so people know, right. yeah. or you can practice to a yard and practice hitting shots to a target instead of just. Hitting shots in the middle. You got to know how far you hit your clubs. Yeah, and I think that is the biggest mistake. Oh, is that West? That you got to uh, know how far you hit your clubs. Oh, yes. There's uh, most amateurs. I mean, I play in a bunch of pro ams every year. And I guarantee you, an amateur, they come up short oh, almost say 95% yeah. of the time. Yeah. And uh, I played in a pro am. Uh, it was actually in uh, this last year. This guy, I mean, he's trying to hit a sand wedge or a nail wedge, probably 150 yards. <laughs> and on this one hole, I, this funniest thing I've ever seen, uh, he blades this L wedge, and it goes probably 150 yards. Yeah. And he turned around in all seriousness. I mean, this ball never got overhead high with an L wedge. And he go, he looked at his buddies and goes. I've never hit an L wedge that far before. Why were you in an L wedge? <laughs> and me and my caddy, we almost started laughing. Yeah. Well, we didn't almost start. We started laughing so hard because he was dead serious. Uh, you know, he scolded. And it, but, uh, you know, I think the amateurs need to get out there and, you know, go to a range, got some targets, specific yardages, yep. hit a club there, and don't hit full out 110%. Right. You make a normal... 85% yeah. golf swing. See how far you hit the ball. Yeah. It makes it a lot easier when you get on the course. If you get to 150 yards, you go, well, now I'm not thinking about it. I know, like all of us probably here, I get to 150 yards, I know exactly where I'm going to hit. Right. So it makes golf a lot easier. Yeah. yeah. I see a lot. I watch somebody on the range, and every swing they take is a full swing, wrap around, follow through. For the way. The yeah, and then they get mm. on the course and it's a three quarter. They don't know how to hit that yard, so they're, trying to, they're trying to yeah, manipulate the shot. Yeah, guiding yeah. it. That yeah. doesn't work. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Most of the Amherst have one, uh, and it's full out, yeah. one swing. Yeah, one you're right. Full out. They don't have one gears. Swing. You know, pros have gears. They have first gear, second gear, whatever. I mean, they have a lot of gears. I, I don't know, but. I, I would guess rarely do they hit six gear. Maybe, only maybe, ever, only maybe. time I ever try to hit a full out sometimes is maybe on a par five that's going to be sketchy for me to get to in two, yeah. and I'll give it a little extra, and if I hit it good, okay. If I hit it bad, I'm probably going to lay up anyway. So, you know, yeah. there's no harm, no foul. Yeah. As long as I don't hit it out of bounds trying to hit it that hard. Right. Yeah, that's right. But most of the time, you stay within yourself. Stay within yourself. And I think a lot of times what I don't really see amateurs doing is – you know, there's shots you can hit with with certain clubs, and you can choke down a little bit, and it doesn't have to go, the, you know, the distance that you hit it with a full swing. 
I mean, exactly. it, you know, I see that a lot when I watch when I watch tour events and I watch better players play. You know, uh, one club doesn't always go just one distance. That's so right. That's it. Yeah, I got like a six iron that goes from uh, 180 to 194. Exactly. You know, you could so probably jump on it a little bit harder if you, you had can, to. But uh, yeah, it's you know, there's no one club that's for perfect for every yardage. Right. right. Exactly. <laughs> One of the things I talk about a little bit, and I, I know, uh, you know, you need to have, like, when you're with wedges, you know, because so, particularly, it's like, let's say you got a, I mean, you know, I know you carry two wedges. You go, well, I mean, you got three wedges. You got your wedge, your 54. You go 54, 58, right? I go 60, 56, and then I got a 50. Did you go to, I didn't know you yeah. went to a four, I didn't know you went yeah, to Yeah, I went four wedges. Okay. Huh. So, yeah, so I have 52, 56, 60. That's always what I got. Yeah. And, with that, you know, but I always tell everybody you should be able to hit those to a certain level all the same because, like, say you get into a, you get a vertical a green, like you guys play, our base, stride out, wind blowing, downwind, you better be able to hit a 60. But it'd be stupid to hit the 60 if it's all flat or downhill when you could hit chip a 52 and you go bun it up there and knock it in. Uh -huh. Say you're in the last, you know, on the first hole of the tournament, probably not, but like on the 18th hole, if you're one down and you don't have a 60 that can get up there and get up there, you're hurting yourself. Yeah. I mean, it could be that time where you need that one time. Yeah. And it, so you need every shot. I know you know this as good as anybody. You better have every book, shot in the book. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you might have to hit a wedge 100 yards instead yes. of your Chip. sand wedge, you know, right. 100 yards. And yeah. that's just, and my, what I do for myself is I just choke up on clubs. Yeah. You know, like for that would be, if I wanted to hit a pitching wedge probably 100 yards, I'd choke up all the way to the metal yeah. and just make a normal nice. swing. Yeah. And, you know, the, the, the length of the club right. dictates how far it goes. So, you know, it should go a lot farther than normal, I mean, a lot shorter yeah. than a normal shot. And, you know, like you have crossovers, and I think that's one thing amateurs don't ever think about. Yeah. You know, yeah. just because I can hit my pitching wedge, whatever, 125, don't mean I can't hit an 8-iron 125. That's right. exactly right. You know, it's just, right. you yeah. got to yeah. yeah. do it. You were talking about Tiger. Steve that's Stricker. something I hear Tiger talk about a lot. Mm -hmm. He may hit a 9-iron from from 110. Yep. No, yep. Now, he definitely could hit a 9-iron, probably 170. Oh, oh definitely. But Steve Stricker just chips the ball around sometimes. You know, I'm done. Not I chip awesome? it. I'm done about 100 yards, but it might be a nine or. Yeah. I've seen you do it. I mean, it's, you, yeah. you know, sometimes you got to take spin off of them. You got to and stuff. I mean, it's different. You know, sometimes the pins in the back. You might want to hit it short of the back of the green and roll it towards the back. You know, with a right. less lofty club. But. That, that uh, Cole, he's, I, I'll never forget it. He came in one day, and I, I was telling him, I said, man, watch Wesley Ball in the wind. It just it just keeps going or whatever. And he's going to take you know, and you remember him probably, don't oh, you? Yeah. He's not a bad player either, but he no, comes he in. He goes, kills he, it, too. Oh, yeah, it's a long way. He's a big dude. And he goes, he goes, he has top spin on the ball. He just has top spin. That's, he comes to me, and I said, dude, he don't have top spin on He goes, he had an iron shot. I swear it had top spin. I said, no, it doesn't have top spin. Who was he talking about? If you measure this. Is it T? What's us? Who was he talking about? He Wes. He, oh, played, he, so he, plays, okay. he plays with Wes. And he comes back and he goes, dude, I'm telling you, you're right. He goes, he, and I didn't say he had top spin. I said, he just, it's really neutralized. It's got back spin. Right. It's just really freaking low. Yeah. And it just keeps going. So he was like a seven iron. He just kind of just, it's not, and it's not even like the trajectory that punctures it. That's part of it, but it's just how it just keeps rolling. And it's kind of like a slow roll. Yeah. So it's got back spin. But he goes, hey, dude, I'm sorry, it's just top spin. I went, <laughs> he doesn't have freaking top spin. <laughs> no. But he was, oh, he was like, oh, it was the best. I've never seen anybody hit like that. You can't do that. You know, it's like, yeah, no, no, no a lot of people can't do yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. There's a reason, yeah. There's a reason for that. <laughs> but, yeah, it was, it was pretty funny when he came in. He was just so adamant. He goes, he's got top spin, man. I'm telling you. He's like, well, if we measure it and put him on track, man, it's not going to say top spin. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I tell you, I'm, I'm looking forward to tomorrow. I've, I've never got to watch you hit balls in person, so I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Seeing you, you know, kind of put on a show, hit different shots, and uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. We've, we've been, since we kind of put this thing together, I mean, I've been really anticipating tomorrow. It's going to be a great day. It'll be a fun day. Yeah, yeah we're going to have a lot of fun. So, yeah, Start we're all going to be involved again. We've got a, the uh, junior tournament tomorrow uh, tomorrow morning, and then we're going to hit, uh, you're going you're gonna to put on a show for everybody tomorrow afternoon. And uh, It's going to be a blast, yeah, man. It's going to be a heck of a setup. So. Um, and then we're going to post on our Facebook page, on our Instagram page. We're going to post a lot of uh, a lot of video, a lot of your, you guys are going to see 
uh, what Wes does out there. We're going to post a lot of video, a lot of uh, a lot of content coming out of tomorrow with the junior tournament and with Wes. So uh, stay tuned for that. And then uh, basically, you know, I'm, I'm I don't know. I'm just excited about everything we've got going on. I know. Uh, you guys are kind of are working together. You're going to kind of do some stuff with Matt with Elite Golf Performance. I'll be yep. involved. We've got a million things going on at the golf course right now. I'm excited for you to see the property tomorrow. I know you got there a little bit late today, so we didn't really get to go out on the course, and it was freezing cold. Pretty, so, pretty cold. Yeah, yeah so tomorrow nice we'll, we'll show you around and show you some of the things we're doing. But uh, you guys, if you're around the area, even if you're coming into town from out of town, we've got we're, we're really working hard to set up the, the facility to be able to handle any type of golfer whether it's you're, you're a serious I don't care if you're a tour level player all the way to someone that's never played golf before we're going to have the golf course the, the, the driving range your academy yeah. we're opening the big shots which is a kind of a target golf type deal more of a social uh, full bar kind of facility uh, a lot of things going on with it and that's at the Marriott Champion Circle uh, here in Fort Worth so one thing I want to yeah, do I, uh, before we leave Wes is when you know we're like I would say friends and family. You may not think that later. No, no, no. no we are, and uh, we've been around each other for a long time. It has nothing to do with this or that, you know, with the golf stuff or whatever. He's just my buddy, and yeah. uh, for him to come up here and make that trip, man, I can't tell you how much I appreciate. Oh, it. Uh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely, that's yeah. gonna be fun. Yeah. So we're gonna have yeah, to really love it. And it. if you're a junior, I can tell you, if I was a junior and I was, I heard this man was coming up here, and with what I know, I promise you, I'll show, I'll show up tomorrow because I'm gonna be like a little kid. I, you should show up. It'll be a great experience for all these kids. And I think, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I'm, go I'm gonna be one of the little there. kids tomorrow. Well, I, yeah. yeah. Well, I still, right. well, <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of fun, man. I can't. I, yeah. It's always, Wes, it's always a blast. We really well, appreciate thanks. you being here. Yes, sir. Glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Glad to meet you. Yes, sir. Thank you, brother. All right. Thanks, Matt. Well, guys, we appreciate you watching. Uh, again, Elite Golf Performance Podcast, Elite Golf Podcast. <laughs> we will see you next time. I did and, too. Uh, <laughs> thanks a lot. That's a wrap, son. <laughs> <laughs>